Hello, everyone. Well, we have a topic that's appropriate for the holidays, meal planning. We have Alicia. Alicia is a registered dietitian. She specializes in planning the meals, personalized meal planning. That's what her specialization is. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you so much, Amina. It's great to be here. Thank you. So let's just understand, you know, meat planning sounds like such a simple thing, like we do that every single day, but still we don't get it right, right? So we want to hear from our dietitian, what are the key steps when we plan our meats? So um, I, there's, uh, meal planning is complex because there's the, the purchasing the sourcing and then there's the cooking part and the planning of what food we're going to eat as well as um you know cleaning up and storage right so there's a lot of steps and so it can feel daunting and overwhelming and some people think that you know they don't know how to cook and so it's just really hard and it can be really easy just to like you know order out and so the the best thing is to take a deep breath so not to get overwhelmed and you know, schedule in 15 minutes a week to think about what you're going to eat in the future. That's my first huge step. So I would just isolate and schedule in 15 minutes every week so that you have time that's embedded in your, your calendar and then you can move it. You know, If it doesn't work out, just like protect those 15 minutes because that's really important. Um, totally. Um, like non, like during a time that you're not distracted, that's going to really help save you some time where it's like in your schedule. Okay. And so once you start thinking about what you're going to eat and make in advance, then creating your own grocery list, which also happens to be your kitchen inventory. So it's just one list and you can keep this list like in Dropbox or in Google drive or someplace on your phone. So it's accessible. And so once you build your pantry, then you can have a list of go to recipes, um, meal ideas, uh, you know, main meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then also snacks. So keeping information in a place that's accessible, no matter where you are, um, so that you you're like, you know, a lot of times we go to the grocery store and we're like, oh, man, I forgot something because you didn't have a list right you wanted to make a thing and it requires lemon juice and lemon juice may or may not be an essential ingredient <laughs> depending on what you're making um if that it definitely enhances flavors of foods and so it's just like having that list so that you're not bummed out my goal is for everybody to have their own meal planning system so that you're not bummed out and you're not like looking in the refrigerator for food when you're hungry because that is a recipe for disaster <laughs> am i right <laughs> So let's yeah. see. So we got scheduling, we got planning, uh, creating your own grocery list, which is also your kitchen inventory. And then, you know, making two pots of something at one time. Like a lot of people are capable of, you know, throwing the instant pot together and making chili or some, some sort of one pot item. But if you have the instant pot going, you can make a second thing at the same time. So whether or not that means just doing a, like making a single pot of something on the stove, like a chili or a soup at the same time, or boiling some eggs to uh, make hard boiled eggs, something super quick that doesn't make, it's not that much more work to make one extra thing. So that might sound overwhelming to some of you, but after you make one pot at a time, you'll graduate to the ability to make two pots at a time over time. So it's baby steps to create your meal planning system in a totally reasonable and doable way. And so I'm all about using items in the grocery store that are already cooked for us. So you can get, you know, canned beans or the beans that already have flavor in them that are, come in like they're called shelf stable beans or cooked grains. And so you already have items that are already cooked that make it easy to throw together a balanced meal. And a balanced meal is also a component of meal planning. So we all know what it feels like to have a meal that's satisfying. And then you were not looking for something afterwards because you got all of the components, right? So protein is necessary in a balanced meal and snack, as well as some kind of carbohydrate with fiber and energy. So some of you guys might know 
a carbohydrate with fiber and energy is a complex carb. So that means like beans and lentils, whole grains like quinoa, farro, barley, um, wild rice is one of my favorites. And then, um, you know, the starchy vegetables like sweet potatoes, regular old fashioned potatoes, um, sweet peas, English peas are kind of fun too. And then fruit. So there's just, those are whole food sources of carbohydrates with fiber and energy. And then adding in those non-starchy vegetables as well as some healthy fats to make a balanced meal and snack. I can go on too, if you want to hear some more. <laughs> Chief, please, please, this is great. This is really great. Okay, cool, awesome. So there are many components that are super helpful and juicy for meal planning. Because the goal is to feel good. Because if we go too long without eating and we don't have anything ready, or, or at least for us to grab two to three items and put them together to make a balanced meal or snack, then we're hungry and we're like, oh man. And then we pull out like a piece of cheese, right? And then you start cutting a piece of cheese and then you have another, a second piece of cheese and a third piece of cheese. And, and it's because it wasn't a balanced snack. So everybody knows what this feeling feels like and it's just not very helpful. So finding a list. So I mentioned this already, but say, imagine if you had this list of meals and snacks on your refrigerator. So sometimes when we're hungry and we know we need to eat something in our head, we're like thinking about what we have on hand, but it's not helpful because we, we will build a case for not wanting to cook something easily because you're already hungry. So imagine if you had a list on the refrigerator or freezer of meals that you had the ingredients for on hand, like you, you have um, like a chili, I keep using the example of a chili, but something like a soup or a chili in the freezer, or I tend to make some meals ahead of time and have them just frozen. And so if you had a list on your freezer where you looked at the list and you're like, oh, cool, I'm going to grab that. And then you just heated it up and then you have a meal, it's delicious. Like this morning for breakfast, I actually had my leftovers for lunch from dinner, excuse me, from last night. And it was, it was just braised chicken, like super simple braised chicken with fennel and onions. And what else I had? Some roasted sweet potatoes, some chickpeas, and some sauteed turnip greens, and um, uh, a little salad of arugula, broccoli stems and carrots and it was delicious and easy but like I had that warmed up in the morning for breakfast because so the next strategy is not making any assumptions on what you need to eat at any one time a lot of my clients don't eat breakfast because they don't like breakfast foods I don't blame them you know it uh like a lot of the breakfast foods have something sweet in them and, or there are eggs. So if somebody doesn't like cereal or like the basic, you know, breakfast items, have soup, have chicken soup, have something that you do like, because there are no rules on what to have at any one time. So I think loosening up your, our thoughts on what could be a meal, because you can have leftovers any time of the day. And if you don't like the word leftovers, because I used to be somebody that didn't like to eat leftovers, because it felt like it was you know, garbage left over from the past, <laughs> but it's not, it could actually be nutrition created for you from the past, which was yesterday or the day before. So to help me get over the whole leftover situation, I actually freeze a lot of the food that I cook the day that I make it. So then it, it is equally as fresh. And I'm going to show you guys one of my um, favorite meal planning storage containers are these 30 ounce glass containers. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's 30 ounces and it has this really cool lid. So some of the lids that we buy out there are plastic and they don't have these hinges and they kind of hurt my hands to, to click, to close. And so I like these because these don't hurt my hands and they're really easy to take off because it totally takes more effort. Like whenever it takes more effort to do something, then we start building a case for failure <laughs> and that it didn't work. And we don't want to go back to doing meal planning because it's too hard. And so literally choosing the right lid for our containers will help us follow through with meal planning. 
more often. And glass is always better than plastic because for many reasons, plastic is just, uh, is, you know, part of the scope of a toxin, right? We want to reduce our consumption of plastic as much as possible. Um, but pl plastic over time, if we freeze plastic containers over time, they get brittle and they crack. And so it's, it's more of a short-term solution for storage over time. So having the right containers will help you set yourself up for success, as well as having a list of meals and snacks that you enjoy. And some of the you know, snacks like an apple with peanut butter or an Asian pear with peanut butter, or even when peaches are in season with some sort of nut butter is a very satisfying snack to have because you have the protein from the nut butter, you have the fruit, which is sweet, and it could be juicy or it could be crunchy depending on what fruit you choose. And then I tend to add, I'm gonna do another show and tell item, share another show and tell item. Um, I tend to add, um, there's this company called Edison Granary. I'm showing it a little bit longer so everybody can see it. So Edison Granary with one D, it's a company in California and they, um, their factory is, um, there's no allergens. So there's no gluten, there's no dairy, there's no common allergens in this facility. So it's like a really great company. And so they make quinoa crispies. So I'll have an apple. I had this apple actually for an after, this morning snack um, today. So I had an apple with peanut butter that was unsalted, no sugar added. Uh, by this company called Once Again. They're a really good company in the East Coast. And with some quinoa crispies on there. And these quinoa crispies are just quinoa that somehow they've magically made crispy. And there's no sugar, no salt, or any other ingredients added to it. It's just crispy quinoa. It's like Rice Krispie treats without, not, it's like Rice Krispies, the cereal without any sugar added. And it adds a second crunch to the snack, which is really fun. And it adds a little bit more fiber than there would be without the quinoa. I have another item that could be a really helpful carbohydrate with fiber and energy, which is um, you know, essential to get give us enough energy. So those of you who shop at Trader Joe's, Amita, do you shop at Trader Joe's? Yes, I love it. It's really good. <laughs> Okay, cool. So these are Norwegian crisp breads. And what's really cool about these is uh, I know not crackers can be challenging for some people. Are they The smaller crackers are hard to just stick to like a certain serving um, because it, it turns into more of a chip where like you constantly want to crunch on them, right? You have to be conscious in terms of like when you're eating crackers or cookies or chips because they they put us into a trance like this hedonic eating where like we forget and we go to outer space and we're abducted by aliens and then you know the box or the bag is empty and then we come back to planet earth again so we don't want that feeling but if you have one of these key of these uh, uh norwegian crisp breads and you put like cottage cheese on there or you put greek yogurt Zatar spice, which is a wonderful um, spice seasoning, which is uh, dried thyme, sometimes dried oregano, and then sesame seeds. And it tastes so delicious on something like cottage cheese or Greek yogurt. And then you could add some like tomatoes if they're on season or some cu cucumber slices. Um, and you could add um, some any kind of like protein salad, like salmon salad, chicken salad, egg salad. Uh, you know, tuna salad, whatever on the cracker, and then have some veggies with it. And then you have a balanced meal or snack, depending on how you do it. So those are just a couple examples of, oh, if anybody, I do have um, a show and tell of the once again, um, peanut butter with no sugar or salt added. I like to, this is super random, this random recommendation. I keep my peanut butter upside down because it tends to be, it's some, it's not a, like a, a fail proof situation, but if I keep it upside down, then it's easier to remove all of the peanut butter from the jar. When I open it, I put it in a separate, like I mix it in a bowl and then put it in smaller containers. Um, Cause I, I don't like that feeling of when you have your, your butter knife in like, this is a tall jar, right? So if my hand was in with the butter knife, then I get peanut butter and oil all over my hand. And that could increase the risk of not wanting to follow through. 
with meal planning. Okay. <laughs> these, are, these are wonderful ideas. Beautiful. I, I think it's a great, great ideas. All the show and tell. I love it. The way you describe all, uh, you know, different snacks, different all the things that we can all do. I think, uh, and, and, you know, you also do it, obviously, personalized meal planning uh, that, that you specialize in, which all of us should get right do you want to speak a little bit on why the importance of personalized meal planning for everyone absolutely so i'm a huge fan of everyone having their own meal planning system that that is reasonable and doable over time and so having your own system a personalized plan will include creating a foundation for your own meal planning system with the proteins that you enjoy um, and the carbohydrates with fiber and energy. Like I have a meal planning program that includes the content so that you could create your own meal planning system with the kitchen inventory. So I have um, content with all of the information for each of the categories to create a, a balanced meal. So protein, carbohydrates with fiber and, and energy, healthy fats, as well as those non-starchy vegetables. And that's where we could eat the rainbow of vegetables. Um, to help us reduce the inflammation in our body that we're, we're, you know, every day we're creating these free radicals that increase our, you know, one of the variables that increase inflammation. And so the more non-starchy vegetables and antioxidants from vegetables and fruits, the better. All right. Well, thank you so much, Alicia. I think amazing information, a lot of inf information for all of us to ponder on why we should have a personalized meal planning. And I love the tips that you gave with all the little, little ideas that we can all do, right? Just to, to have nutritious and satisfying meals, right? That's the, 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 the catch is the, the nutritious, nutritious going with the satisfying and the tasty because the what is nutritious is typically not tasty but you gave us all these ideas of tasty meals that could be nutritious at the same time absolutely um my pro, my interestingly my program is called quick and delish by alicia connor so i uh, i create healthy meals that are also delicious which sounds like a tall order right <laughs> But for me, it's doable, um, and I um, I think it's really important for people to like. There are healthy foods that don't taste good, and then there are foods that are not healthy that don't taste good, right? And so, finding foods that are also healthy that help us feel good, so that we can get through our day without the feeling of you know the sugar calling our name or the caffeine calling our name all day. Um, and that is having balanced meals and snacks so that we feel satisfied and that, um, I'm, I'm really a huge fan of the idea of like within a meal, we include sweetness. And what that means, it's not like added sugar. It's like add carrots and, and fennel. Some people don't have access to fresh fennel, um, the fennel bowl, but you could use fennel seed, um, but using carrots or caramelized onions, uh, winter squash is sweet or sweet potatoes. If we include, you know, the like a spectrum of flavors, then maybe just maybe we might not feel like we need to have dessert. Um, and I'm not saying that's a, like a foolproof situation because sometimes we'll we'll just have dessert and it's a treat. Um, but just fi figuring out like after dinner, if you swapped out one of your desserts per week for like like a fruit with some kind of protein with it that might actually hit the nail on the head um, more times than not if you've had a balanced meal. All right, well, that makes sense. Thank you so much. A very appropriate topic for the holidays. So happy holidays, everyone, and learn to create the balanced meals as Alicia is pointing out. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.